Welcome to the People Teaching People podcast. Joining me on the podcast is Simona Costantini. Simona is the founder and CEO of Costantini Productions, a full service podcast production agency. She is also the executive producer and host of two podcasts, Happiness Happens Podcast and As It Relates to Podcasting. She helps women entrepreneurs in the parenting, wellness, and marketing spaces bring their personality, brand, and passion to the mic by helping them launch, manage, and grow their podcasts. Simona's experience spans more than 10 years in marketing, communications, advertising, and public relations. When Simona isn't behind the mic producing a show or strategizing a game-changing podcast launch, you can find her at home in wine country with her husband, Stephen, and their cockapoo puppy named Gus. Simona is actually my amazing podcast editor, whom I've had the privilege to work with for almost a year now. She has been an incredible mentor and teacher for me in the world of podcasting, and I always appreciate her kind encouragement, her constructive feedback, and her suggestions of new ideas, tools, and strategies to explore and implement. In this episode, we talk about creating online courses starting a podcast, and podcasts as a tool for both teaching and learning. Thank you so much for joining me, Simona. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here. And where I wanted to start was to learn a little bit more about you and your story. So what led you to start your own full service podcast production agency and to hosting two of your own podcasts? That is such a great and loaded question. Um, (laughs) And honestly, not something that I ever anticipated for myself ever. Um, I started my production company I would I like to say around the same time that I launched my first podcast, which is called Happiness Happens. And that was back towards the end of 2018, beginning of 2019. And I was, you know, I just found myself in this like really hard place. Like I was just in a really dark place. I, you know, was trying to navigate changes in life and I wasn't hundred percent sure of how, you know, to find that inner fulfillment and all of those different pieces. And so I started, uh, thinking and like learning about all these different things, right? And so it was things around fear and worthiness and self-worth and stories we tell ourselves and the belief systems we have about about ourselves. And one thing led to another. And at the time, I candidly, and I openly share this a lot on my own podcast, but I was uh, in therapy and I was talking to my therapist and I was like, I just feel like there's something more. Like, I feel like there's something that, you know, is deeper and more meaningful and all of those different things. And, um, I got the idea in my head to start a podcast. And I was like, okay, well, if I feel this way, there's got to be somebody else in this world that feels the same way as I do. And I started just putting, you know, pen to paper, different ideas to paper, and then created the Happiness Happens podcast. So it launched in January of 2019. And on the side, I was working in corporate at the time um, in communications. Um, I did all kinds of stuff, like video production and all these different things. And I think you know, one thing that's great with like learning and in life is we don't really notice when we're in it in the moment, why we're in this particular moment and why we're learning this particular thing. And it's not until we get outside of that moment that we can see the impact and why we needed to learn that specific thing, you know, in order for, for us to be able to get to that next level in life or that next step of what we want to do. And so, I digress. And I started my uh, podcast and through there, I uh, started freelancing on Fiverr. I, you know, just wanted to make a couple extra bucks. And I was like, okay, let me see if there's anyone that I can help with their podcast and and, and that kind of thing. And then um, actually some of my clients I've been working with since then, like we still work together to this day on, you know, just editing and all kinds of things. And some clients it's expanded, like I couldn't even imagine. And then I just kind of let it flow. And I was doing that. I was doing that and working in corporate. And then the pandemic happened and I lost my corporate job, um, which is a huge blessing in disguise. And I'm so grateful for, um, but again, at the moment, it's hard to see things as a blessing when they're challenging. Right. And, um, I, yeah, I got furloughed and then I just kind of went 
all in. And I was like, well, you know, the universe doesn't really give you many moments in life to actually do what it is you want to do. And then I started my production company more full fledged. I decided to offer more services. And then at the beginning of 2021, I launched my services officially, um, a booked out with, uh, five, I think it was five launch clients, um, in 72 hours. And it's been nonstop ever since we've just been produced every single month. We've been doing a launch some months we do two or three and then managing and producing podcasts after there. So it's a little bit of like a long winded story of how, um, I got here, but then, yeah, that's, that, that was essentially the journey. And then, you know, the second podcast as it's called, as it relates to podcasting was born out of the need of like answering people's questions and people being so confused of how to start a podcast and the whole process. And so I was like, okay, let's create this podcast in response to that. So I feel like now they all kind of like mesh really beautifully, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Things have kind of moved into alignment, but you're so right when you look back and you're sort of outside of that experience or some time has gone by, you can kind of see how that experience or situation or at the time maybe unfortunate event or disappointing event sort of brings you to where you are today and sort of guides your learning journey along the way as well. So yeah, I didn't know that about your story. So Ooh. I feel like I've gotten to know you even better. Thank you I so much it. for sharing. Thank you. Now, along with your two podcasts, and as a part of your podcast production agency, you have created an online course called Start and Launch a Podcast in Eight Weeks. So I would love for you to share who your course is for and what people can expect when they sign up for that. Oh, I love that question. So the course is for anyone, I want to say anyone, but I hate using the word anyone because it's so broad. Um, I work primarily with entrepreneurs and like lifestyle content creators. So I would say the course is geared towards entrepreneurs and lifestyle creators. Uh, and the goal and the idea is for them to be able to launch and start, you know, start and launch their own podcast on their own in eight weeks. And I created the course because I was getting so much demand for production services and launch services, which is so amazing. And I'm so grateful. And one thing that I noticed in the process is, you know, not everyone can afford to pay a lot of money for a podcast launch. Right. And I wanted to be able to give people the resources and, you know, everything that they needed to learn when it comes to creating a podcast without holding anything back. Uh, And so I essentially brain dumped every single thing I know and every single thing I do into this course. It's very uh, detailed. It's very thorough. And I've had um, quite a few people in it and go through and actually launch their podcast at the end, which is amazing because, you know, sometimes when you sign up for an online course, it's like can sit in your inbox for a little bit, but that's not the case with this one, which is cool. Um, and so ultimately when you, when you sign up for the course, it's broken out into different modules. So it goes everything from foundations to your technology, um, to your social media strategy, your launch strategy, planning your episodes. Um, and I give you all kinds of freebies, like, you know, my production schedules, my show note templates, um, how to reach out to guests, how to book guests, how to grow your show, how to, and there's a section on how to monetize it as well. So it's really full fledged from like A to Z and every part of your podcast launch journey. Well, that would be incredibly helpful because when I started my podcast, I was actually (laughs) part of a little mastermind group. So there was a group of us learning how to start a podcast, but um, people kind of couldn't always make the sessions. And yeah. I, a lot of the times it ended up just being me because I really wanted You're to like, I just, I just want to learn how to launch a podcast. I just want to know how, but there are so many pieces uh, to launching a podcast and getting yeah. it out into the world. And it can be so overwhelming, just even as you, like the technical pieces or oh, yeah. creating artwork and there are so many little pieces and things to think about yeah. uh, to be able to have all that packaged nicely into one course that walks you through and guides you through that process would be amazing. So I can see why there would be a demand for that. And then uh, it would also provide people with the information and skills and tools that they need to actually make that happen. So it's great that you put that out into the world. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. 
And did you use an online learning platform for your course? And if so, which one? Yeah. You mean to host it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I do. And I'm trying to remember, I always get them confused. It's not, no, it's not member press because member press plugs in with WordPress. So I tried to use member press at first and I got very confused because the, a lot of the WordPress, it's funny. Like I, I always joke around that, you know, I can figure out very complex tech, except for like when it comes to like setting up a printer and figuring out like a WordPress plugin, I'm like, what, like how, how do you do that? And so, um, I ended up going on to Member Vault, um, and it was very simple. They broke it all down, you know, for you. You can put in your different modules, and underneath the different modules, you can put in which course um, lesson goes where. You can add graphics, you can add questions, and you know, things for engagement on there as well. And I liked it because the pricing of it was lower, so it didn't feel like you know paying this astronomical price to host this online course, it, it was very doable. And so that was one of the things that I had looked for um, when I was choosing a, a platform for it. I've also had in the past a course on Thinkific and I really liked Thinkific as well. I thought that was a really great platform. Um, but again, it kind of came down to like functionality and cost for me, you know? Yeah. Those are two key decision making factors for sure. If you're yeah. thinking of using an online course platform, but it is wonderful if it's pretty intuitive in terms of setting things up and getting your content on there and you don't have to struggle and sort of figure things out uh, too much. So that sounds great. Thank you for sharing that. Of course. Now, um, you, I imagine, have uh, learned a lot in supporting people with their podcast because you do that in so many different ways as part of your production company. So I'm curious, what are some of the more common questions that people ask you and what are some of the biggest challenges that they face? Oh, I love this question. I think it has to definitely go back down to the tech piece that we were talking about before. I think, you know, technology, because there's so much of it and there's so many different options of recording software and editing software, what kind of microphone do I use? What do I use for headphones? Do I even need headphones? You know, all of that whole section of starting a podcast is very like foreign to, to a lot of people. And it makes sense because we don't really spend a lot of time researching technology unless we have to, right? And so one of the biggest questions I get is, how do I do it? Like, what do I do? What recording platform do I use? What hosting platform do I use? You know, what editing software do I use? And then in turn, what te what kind of technology do I use? Where do I, you know, where do I do the actual recording? Um, I mean, we're using Riverside FM, which I absolutely love. Some people use Zencaster and, you know, some people will edit in Descript. Some people will edit in GarageBand or Audacity. And so what I decided to do was I decided to put together like a, um, a document and it's on my website and it's just like a resource to like give you all the things that, you know, all you need, all your best practices and all that kind of stuff. But I think one of the biggest pieces is that tech piece. And then aside from the tech piece, the next one would be really diving into like the niche of your podcast and naming the podcast those are two of the biggest struggles that people definitely come across because first of all, there's so many podcasts, right? Quote unquote, so many podcasts out there. So a lot of podcasts, you know, the name that you want might already be taken. And so, you know, what do you do? How do you get creative? Are you allowed to use the same name as somebody else? You know, how does that podcast serve your niche and all those different things? So those would be the top two questions I get the most would be like name and niche and then all of the technology side. Those really align with the questions <laughs> that I had when I was starting out my podcast as well. It just felt yeah. so overwhelming. And I remember trying to record my first teaser slash trailer episode for my podcast, which came out in February of 2020. <laughs> and being in my basement recording it. And then when I played it back, it sounded like I was in an echo chamber and I must yeah. have tried like eight times. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out it was. And it ended up being one little button that I needed to click. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like, but yeah. how are you supposed to know, yeah. you know? Oh, and then I think, you know, one other thing that comes to mind too is especially right now, uh, uh, there's a huge, um, question around monetization. How do I monetize the podcast? How do I make money off of the podcast? So that would be like another really big question that I get pretty much on a daily basis, I would say. 
Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. I can see how, because you do, you put yeah. so much time, effort, and energy into it. And there is a cost associated with there having is. a podcast. You need yeah. to, uh, it doesn't need to be giant, but um, there definitely is a, is a bit of a cost. So thinking about uh, how you can leverage your podcast or um, generate some money from your podcast as well. I'm sure people are quite curious about that. Yes. Cause oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you invest the time in the beginning, just getting everything set up. And then also there's that investment um, of time and energy and money along the way too. Exactly. So yeah, I can see how those questions would come up as well. Yeah. Now, starting a podcast and putting yourself and your voice out there into the world can be very scary. So I yes. know when I started podcasting, so now it would have been about two and a half years ago, there were literally times that I questioned my sanity and yeah. I would ask myself, why am I doing this? And I figured it would probably only be my mom, my sister, and maybe my husband that would listen. Um, so why was I doing this to myself? And then what if somebody actually did listen? Somebody other then than what? those three people and what <laughs> might they think or what might they say? So how would you say creating a podcast trend? transforms or can transform your personal mindset and mm -hmm. help you uncover those hidden internal blocks and ultimately give you some more confidence. Oh, okay. So I hear this so much on a soul level and I have to say, like, even though I've been doing this since 2018, I, when I was recording my last like my new podcast, essentially like I was doing the intro, the outro, the trailer, the first episodes and all that, the amount of imposter syndrome that I still had, even though I do this literally every single day, it's because I think, you know, people get so overwhelmed or have that imposter syndrome and like start going down the rabbit hole with the stories because you care so much. You know what I mean? Because you have a message and you want to share it. And I think remembering that you would never have this idea Okay, I'm going to say this like phrase and I don't, don't even know why I keep saying it, but I heard it somewhere and I have to say like I, I'm not someone who's like overly like a religious person or anything like that. I'm a very spiritual person, but I've heard this phrase and it was if God puts it on your heart, they it he wants you to have it, right? And so if you have this idea for a podcast and getting this big message out message out there, there's a reason why you're wanting to get that message out there. There's someone that needs to hear that message, right? There's something that needs to happen, a transformation that will only occur if you show up and step up to the mic. And so, you know, thinking of it that way, and I, th I say this to my clients all the time, I say it to myself often, if you don't show up and deliver the message that only you can deliver in the way that you can deliver it, the person who's listening to this right now, or the person who's listening to the last episode, or will be listening to the next episode, are never going to get to hear the information that they know they need and only you can deliver it and teach it in that way. You know, like you and I could both host a podcast about podcasting and give very different messages in that same podcast, right? And so I think it's really going back to that bigger purpose, that deeper why. And when you approach things from that space that you're almost doing people a disservice by not showing up, that really starts to shift your mindset. And then, you know, you you do it and you try and it's scary and then you make it through and you make it through to the end. You're like, okay, that wasn't that bad, you know? And then you do it again and you get back on. You're like, okay, it was a little bit easier than last time, you know? And then you get, you get back on there again and you do it again and eventually it becomes easier. And then you elevate and then you grow. And then the more you elevate and the more you grow, the more your audience elevates and grows, right? And so, I hope this answers the question, but I think that that would be like, you know, one of the biggest things is really tapping into that deeper purpose, that bigger why, and just knowing that that message needs to land on the person that it needs to land to. Like when I first started the Happiness Happens podcast, I remember saying to my husband, boyfriend at the time, I said to him, I'm like, you know what? Like, even if it just one person listens, that's all I care about. Just one person listening to the podcast, because that means that one person, was impacted in a significant way and maybe opened their mind to something new, right? Which is the beauty with this type of, of format is that you get to sit on people's hearts in that way, you know? And I think too, it's interesting because oftentimes you might not even know who's, well, a lot of the times you don't know who's listening and the impact yeah. that you're having. Sometimes yeah. you get to hear about it. 
And uh, I was so shocked. I actually had a client for my consulting business be someone that listened to my previous podcast. Oh, wow. <laughs> which was so in Washington. Yeah. And I thought, huh. That is so interesting that, you know, she listened, resonate, it resonated with her. She wanted to reach out. And yeah. then we ended up working together in a different capacity. And it was really uh, an interesting and beautiful thing. But That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, no, it was incredible. But you're right. Like, you kind of just got to take that first step and keep coming back to that why. And then just know that it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, exactly. It probably won't be even moving forward, but no. you're going to learn something new pretty much every time along the way. But I have to say, I still get a little nervous. Like as I wait for a guest to arrive, I just get a little nervous. I read over the questions that I'm hoping to ask and it's just, but it always ends up being so fantastic. And it's just yeah. such a great opportunity to uh, share your ideas and thoughts and stories and to talk and connect with interesting people as well. Oh, I totally agree. I couldn't, I honestly could not agree more. It's so true. It, it just is so powerful when you think about it that way. Like I, one of my best friends, her name is Nicole. She found me through someone who shared my podcast on their stories and we didn't know each other at the time. She started listening to my podcast, messaged me on Instagram. And then we met at an event, like a, a networking event a few months later, and we became instant kindred soul sisters. And I couldn't imagine my life without her. You know what I mean? Never would have happened if I didn't get up and just decide that I had something worth, worthy of sharing, you know? That is such a great story. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. <laughs> it just and blows my mind. When I really think about that, I'm like, what? Like, Yeah. How does that happen? But yeah, yeah. You, you gained a really close and special friend. From, exactly. Yeah. So you never know. You never exactly. know. You never know. Now, podcasts are definitely being used as a learning tool these days um, mm -hmm. in formal learning situations. So as both a resource to listen to and as something that students are creating to explore mm -hmm. concepts and ideas. And I know my kids, they listen to podcasts at school. And I, when I was teaching at the University of Calgary, I recorded a podcast episode for my students and it was part of their final presentation assignment for their teaching practicum course. Mm -hmm. So why do you feel that podcasts are a valuable resource for learning both inside and outside the classroom? And how do you think they might be changing the way we learn? Oh, I think they've changed the way we learn in so many different capacities because you have access to any type of content right at your fingertips. And, you know, we live in a society right now that questions everything. And, you know, I'm part of, I don't even know what generate, I don't even know. I don't even Gen Z. I don't, I don't think I'm Gen Z. I don't think so. Maybe millennial. <laughs> I'm honestly not sure. But anyway, I can't figure out what the dates are for that. But I know the generation behind me learns that way. They spend their time online. They learn through story, right? If you look at something like TikTok, for example, look at all the different trends that are going on on TikTok, especially with younger people right? They're telling stories about their lives through media that they're typing in onto their TikTok. And, you know, that's the way that they're getting their points across. When you have something like a podcast, you're sharing your story, a story, any story in the exact way that you want to deliver it. And I think it's really interesting because it positions anyone with a certain type of authority, quote unquote, to be able to teach on that topic. Like you would never host a podcast about teaching if you didn't know or teaching and learning if you didn't know how to do that, right? Most people wouldn't host a podcast on something that they have no idea about. And I think that it gives people opportunity. I think it gives them a different perspective. I think it makes us more aware. I think it makes us have a more open mind. And I also think it can allow us to be a little bit more kind to one, to one another by learning things that other people, um, believe in like their own opinions and their own beliefs and it like makes us more tolerant. Um, and I think it teaches us to not take one particular thing at face value, right? Like if you look at traditional media, which nothing against the media, we all need the news. You need to be informed. You need to know what's going on in the world. Right. Um, but oftentimes, and I used to work in the media, there's always a spin, right? There's always a spin. There's always something that's curated. There's always a specific story and angle that they, that is portrayed, Right. 
Whereas a podcast, especially if you have two people who are co-hosting, for example, you can get that banter and it feels a little bit more authentic. And I think that's why that form of media resonates with people because of that authenticity. And even news media now, you see them, they'll, they'll, they're adopting podcasts too, right? And so I think it's just a different way to relate. It's on the go. You know, you can learn while you're walking. You can learn while you're in your car, when you're picking up your kids, when you're, you know, with the girls, like wh- wherever, right? And so I just think it gives so much more opportunity and expansion um, in our current society. And we get to learn things on such a more profound level. Yeah. And I think it's so interesting too, because I think it sort of opens up some opportunities. Um, if you're not the type of person that likes to get up in front of the room and share your ideas and thoughts, it's it's sort of a different way to do that. You can, um, you know, be behind the microphone and it's Mm -hmm. a little bit more intimate and you can listen back to your thoughts and ideas and you can edit things if you want to, but it's still a way to have a voice. And I think it's um, such an interesting thing to bring into the classroom um, Mm -hmm. because I think like public speaking, sharing your thoughts and ideas is an important skill for people to have. But sometimes that just, you know, putting up your hand or standing up in front of the classroom, Not that piece that. of it. Yeah. That can be tricky for a lot of people. Some people yeah. it's their thing, but it can be a tricky one for everyone, but it still allows you um, to hear, I think more voices when you give mm-hmm. some different options and ways to share. Oh, it's so true. And I just want to bounce off that for a second, because I, especially when it comes to like the classroom, like I remember like when I was in school, elementary school, high school, even university and college, you know, you'll always have people who are more extroverted, who are more willing to share, who are excited to get up in front of the class and do all of that. And, you know, I was always someone that was very comfortable doing those things. Um, but I always also felt like every time I raised my hand, I took an op- like an opportunity away from somebody else who maybe would have raised their hand if I didn't put mine up, if that makes any sense. And so, you know, exactly like you're saying, getting that chance to like edit things and, and you know, show up through this media with your ideas and your thoughts, even if you're not comfortable standing up in front of a group of 25 people, like it doesn't mean that you have anything less to say because you don't feel like standing up in front of the classroom, right? Like it's so, it's so important and it allows everyone's opinions to be, to be heard. And so I love that. I love that you brought in that layer because I think that's really important to remember. Yeah. Well, and it's, it is such a big piece of teaching, teaching and learning. So when I work with student teachers you know, they create these incredible PowerPoint slides and they would have all their notes and they'd, you know, just want to get through their lesson and make sure that they covered everything that they possibly could. And in some cases at the end, I would ask them the question, so how do you know that they understand or took something away from what you were sharing with them? Right. And who knows and understands? So, um, you know, finding those ways to get those voices and to kind of mm. seek that uh, evidence of learning or um, those different perspectives is so important. So I always, yeah, That's think so about true. the diversity of humans in yeah. the classroom and in our world as well. <laughs> well, okay, I have to bounce off this again too. Sorry, I'm sorry. But, you know, one thing that comes to mind for me, like I remember when I was in school and I know there's so many people who are like this when they're learning. You know, I went to school at the time, like when I first started in school when I was younger, um, I have a late birthday. And so I was like in that weird like cutoff where you like go to school when you're like three years old and you're kind of always a year behind everyone. So I never quite felt like I could keep up with everybody else. You know what I mean? Like I always felt like I learned later. I always feel like I grasped co- grasped concepts later. Um, and so some people are auditory learners. Like I learn by hearing and listening, right? And it's nice to be able to pick something up and be able to like listen to it multiple times and more than once. Um, I'm not a good reader. Like I, I can read, I know how to read, but I can't sit and read a book. It's very difficult for me, right? And so who's to say that, you know, learning from a textbook or an audiobook? what's, you know, there are definitely, like, there are differences and there are benefits to both, but it gives people a different way to be able to access information, um, which is so true when I just kind of realized that as you were talking (laughs) yeah no it is so true because we're all different people who learn best in different ways and have different preferences when it comes to that for sure I love that 
Now, um, my new thing seems to be finding statistics on things. So, of course, I did some research. um, But I was curious about podcast listening and what's actually happening. So I did a little looking into what's happening in Canada. So Mm. podcast listening is increasing. Mm -hmm. And there was a survey done by media by the Media Technology Monitor, and they said that one third of Canadian adults claim to have listened to a podcast in the past month. And on average, they're listening for over four hours a week. So that's quite significant. So I'm wondering why you think that podcasts are so popular. And what do you love most about listening to podcasts yourself? Okay, that is such a good question. So I think that it's convenience. Um, And I think that it's broad topics, right? You can open your podcast app and you can turn on a parenting podcast, learn X, Y, and Z about why is my child having a tantrum today? Okay. And then in the same breath, 20 minutes later, you can uh, listen to a podcast about what has happened in the world today, right? Like, you know, a news one, for example. And then maybe 20 minutes later, you're like, you know what? I want something entertaining. Like, let's listen to some comedy. And so I think it gives people choice. And I think it gives people the opportunity to kind of like unwind and like learn on the go and, you know, find that entertainment too, especially if you're commuting to and from work, um, you have a break or, or what have you. Um, I think it brings a level of like connectivity. I always like to say, you know, like the, there's no more intimate connection that you'll have than with your, your audience, with your listeners, right? Like when it comes to a form of media, um, people are choosing to plug in your show into their ears to listen to what you have to say, right? Like there's no greater honor in my opinion. And, um, I think that, you know, it, yeah, it really just makes it very, very convenient to learn different things. And I know for myself, like one of the reasons why I love to listen to podcasts and I get to listen to a lot of podcasts every single week, week, which I'm really grateful for, they're all different, right? And, you know, even, uh, Tana last week I was thinking, two of my clients had done a podcast on perfectionism and two of them had uh, something else about the same topic. Topic. Neither of the podcasts were the same. Neither, like none of the episodes were the same. They all had different perspectives and I learned from both of them, right? And so I feel like I get to learn just by association and just get to, and just get to absorb all of this knowledge in that I never would have gotten the chance to otherwise. Yeah, it is such a great opportunity to learn or to laugh or to learn about true crime events that have happened yeah. uh, in your in your area or in your country or around the world. Yeah, I there's all kinds of podcasts that I love listening to and I tend to listen to them the most at, while I'm cleaning bathrooms. That's my I go-to. Mean. <laughs> It makes it, I actually, not really, I wouldn't say look forward to cleaning bathrooms, but it gives me sort of a reason to mind it less. That's right. You're like, it's me time. Me time in the bathroom listening to my podcast. Yeah. Double productivity. Look at you. When do you listen to podcasts most other than when you're editing them? I listen to them when I'm walking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm driving, but I'll be honest, I don't really drive a lot because I work from home. So I do go for walks and and stuff like that. So I'll either listen to an audiobook or I'll listen to a podcast when I'm walking. And do you have a favorite podcast you're listening to right now? (sighs) Okay. That is a really good question. I have one podcast that I always go back to as one of my favorites, um, and it's called Make Your Damn Bed. And I don't know if you've heard – have you heard of this podcast before? No, I have not. Okay. I found her on Spotify. I don't even know how I found her. But what I love about her podcast – I can't remember the host name at the time, but I always recommend her show to like everyone because I just love it. Um, But she has quick five-minute episodes every single day. And the idea is you listen to them while you're making your bed. Like it's enough knowledge. And some of them are self-help. Some of them are just mindset. Some of them are reframing. Some of them are about storytelling. Like all kinds of stuff. And it's that jolt of, you know, just – perspective shift in the morning, which is nice when you're making your bed. So that would be one. A couple of my other favorites are um, School of Greatness with Lewis Howes. And uh, the other one is Earn Your Happy by Lori Harder. Thank you. I'm going to have to add those to my list. Yes. And my husband makes our bed, so um, I'll oh. get. I'll, I'll tell him he'll need to listen to that one. We're going to need the that. Coles notes from every episode. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So um, I know that you love to learn from podcasts, but when you look back, do you have a favorite teacher or learning experience that you've had that really stands out for you? 
You know, that's a really good question. I had this science teacher when I was in high school that, um, and she's passed away now. I think um, she passed away a few years ago. She had cancer, but she was so sure of herself and she taught, I've never been someone who's sciencey, math, math, like that kind of stuff has never been my strength. Um, but she taught it in such a way that was understandable and she was so kind, you know, and like high, high school is such a hard time to begin with. And she was just always so kind. And I always loved that about her. And so she sticks out to me and all of the teachers that I had, cause she cared, you know? And I think that teachers have this amazing ability, whatever kind of teacher you are, whether you're teaching in, in a school in life or learning through a podcast like this, teachers have this amazing ability to shift perspectives that without even knowing that they're doing that, you know? It's incredible. It's incredible how you can shape minds and people's futures. Um, and especially by just extending a little kindness. Oh my gosh. Like, is there anything better? Like, yeah. So I would definitely say her, I think it was biology, grade 10. <laughs> well, I used to teach science, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> one of the, and high school science and junior high science. But it is oh, so wow. funny when we look back. It really is. Well, for most people that I ask this question to, and for myself, when I think of or people think of a teacher or experience, it's so much about how that person made them feel. Hmm. Not so much exactly about like the content that was being taught. It was yeah. like the feeling that that person gave them or how they inspired them or exactly. um, made them feel seen and heard or explain things in a way that made sense, as you said, and just seemed exactly. like a kind, good person. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, you've had quite the journey. And as I said, I feel like I've gotten to know even more about you. So when you look back at your journey so far, what would be something that you are most proud of? Okay, I think one of the things that I'm most proud of is being able to sit in life's really hard moments and move through them. Um, I think that we all go through really difficult things in life. Um, and I think sometimes we can just glaze over them and just sort of not really pay too much attention to it. Um, but I'm proud of myself for developing like the awareness to be able to do that and like sit in that and like be okay with having a bad day and like knowing that that's totally fine and like not beating myself up or like judging myself for that, you know? Um, because I think that's where the resilience like changes you and that's where real change happens is in those harder moments in life. Um, it also helps you appreciate those really good moments, right? And life is full of hills and valleys up and down, right? And you know, where we grow the most is in, in the valley. That's what I've heard. So yeah, that's what I would say. I don't even think I got that expression right, but here we are. <laughs> no, that absolutely makes sense. And I think that is a good reminder too for people because you're right, like we face those ups and downs and there's so much learning that can come from those challenging situations. I probably drive my children insane because they'll tell me how they did on an assignment or test and I'll say, well, did you learn something from it? For me, that's the most <laughs> like, important Mom. part. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, but in 10 yeah. years, they're going to be like, do you remember when mom used to ask us if we learned something? And then like, you know, maybe they'll have kids of their own one day and they'll be like, but what did you learn? <laughs> but what did you learn? What were your takeaways? Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Oh, our poor children with a dad that's a principal and a mom who's an educator. They're oh, just, they don't get away yeah. with anything. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, they do. They're, they're lovely kids, but I'm sure we drive them in insane. I'm oh, sure of it. I love that. Now I have a few rapid fire questions for you. Okay. Uh, first one is what is something that you would love to learn about or something that you would love to learn to do? So mm, this is a really good question. The first thing that comes to mind for me is learning how to cook Indian food. <laughs> That's something that I would absolutely love to learn how to do. I think I've had it on my goals list for the last like six years. So this might be my year. <laughs> it could absolutely be your, your year. That Yeah, it is so flavorful. A very good choice. Very good Love choice. It. What is a place that is at the top of your travel bucket list? So I would say 
my husband and I are very fortunate and just my own self, like very fortunate to have been able to visit a lot of amazing places. Um, you know, we've been to Japan, we've been to Croatia, we've been to all, all parts of the States, lots of the South and, you know, um, Spain and, and Paris. And I would say the top of my bucket list though, and this is actually a trip that we're taking in a couple of years. My dad will be 65 and he's taking us, um, to Italy where my family's from. Um, I've been to Italy once before I've been to Venice. Um, but I really want to see Italy through my dad's eyes. He's been there so many times. Um, he used to be a flight attendant and he has all kinds of friends over there. And so this trip is going to be, you know, going to Rome first, and then we're going to go to where my family's from. And so being able to like, see that through his eyes and experience that with my family is going to be a really cool trip. So that's definitely at the top of my list. Well, that will be amazing, especially, yeah, to go with your dad and to be able to have that experience with him. Yeah. And if you could sit down and have a conversation with someone that you would love to learn from, who would it be and why? Hmm. I think that is such a good question. It's a hard question. I mean, you could go the route of someone quote unquote famous, right? But I think that I would just love to learn more about like my Italian family and like upbringing and all of that kind of stuff. My grandma is an amazing storyteller, my Italian grandma. She's an amazing storyteller. Um, I learned so much about my family through her. Um, and she talks about her mom a lot. And I think it'd be so cool to sit down and have a conversation with like my great grandmother and just like, see, you know, what was it like? What was life like? You know, um, that'd be super cool. Um, but if we go the route of like, you know, someone more on like the famous side, if you will, um, I would say definitely, I'd love to sit down with, um, Lori Harder from that podcast that I was telling you about and just kind of pick her brain. Um, and then I would also, yeah, I think that that would be it. That sounds like a good, interesting com- combination, sort of right? that sentimental <laughs> family history, that sort of connection piece, and then someone who really inspires you um, and intrigues you in the world of business yeah. and entrepreneurship. I love it. Yeah. Now, uh, as we've been talking about, education really does play such an important and integral role in all facets of our lives, how we work and live and play and explore. Do you have any final thoughts or words of wisdom that could empower or support people in their own teaching and learning journeys? Yes. I think that we never know who we're impacting and how we're impacting them. And I think the more that we can realize that how we show up in this world is less to do about us and more so about how we make other people feel and how we leave them a little better than we found them. I think when we can remember that, it takes the drama and the chaos out of the day-to-day and allows us to be more present in our lives every single day. Um, You know, especially if you're in a classroom full of kids that probably, you know, have a lot of different personalities and it can be very stressful, but knowing that you have the power and the capability to um, change their lives in a significant way by doing nothing other than being kind and holding space for people and being honest and just open. I think that is so important. I would agree. And Simone, I want to thank you so much for sharing your time and story and words of wisdom with us today. If our listeners want to learn more about you and all the things that you're up to, where are the best places to find you? Yes. So you can find me on Instagram for sure. My handle is at Simona with two underscores Costantini. And my website is SimonaCostantini.com. I have two podcasts. The first one is Happiness Happens. That's more of the spiritual self-growth podcast. And the other podcast is called As It Relates to Podcasting. Um, and it is all about how, how to you know launch, grow, and monetize your show. And those would be the best places, I would say. Perfect. I'll make sure to share those in the show notes. Thank you so much for joining me, Simona. It was great to connect with you and to learn from you. Thank you so much for having me.